My name is Zach Reinitz. Um, I am the owner of Autarky Expedition Vehicles. We build uh, four-wheel drive motorhomes uh, right here in Reno, Nevada. We've been doing it for three years now, and this is our latest creation. So all of our vehicles are solid axle four-wheel drives. Uh, the last two were built off the Ford Econo line platform. We used uh, lightweight shuttle buses for our first two. They were a fiberglass shuttle bus. We uh, stripped all the front suspension off of them and converted them to four-wheel drive. We had a company in Salt Lake City called Advanced 4x4. Uh, they have a long reputation for converting the Econoline into four-wheel drive. They helped build our first two. Then we continued to, to do what we do and build them into campers. Uh, that includes large off-grid solar systems, big water systems, um, all the luxuries to be off-grid for, for weeks on end in primitive locations without, without needing to come in for resources. I've been in the, the off-road industry uh, for, for years personally, you know, four-wheeling and exploring all the different local trails in our area. And then when it came to my expertise when it comes to building the vehicles, so I had a lot of time uh, designing and constructing um, alarms and, and fire systems on a computer on CAD design. And so I took a lot of my CAD design skills into designing a new camper for myself. Um, I was tired of working a 40 hour a week job. I decided to build a camper for myself to go and explore. We built our very first one uh, about three and a half years ago. We traveled over 3,500 miles around the US and Canada, testing the vehicle and, and understanding what it really means to, to build out an expedition truck and, and, and to know what it takes to, to be off grid. And so we continued to to evolve from, from truck to truck. This one is just leagues better than our very first one. Uh, we've learned uh, you know, a ton when it comes to solar systems, when it comes to designing our water systems, when it comes to choosing the right insulation and, and flooring materials and overall, the overall platform that you start with. This, uh, this diesel truck on the F450 platform, uh, it has almost a 28,000 combined gross vehicle weight rating. And we're sitting only at about 12,500 right now, fully loaded with water and everything. And so it's way under its, its total vehicle weight rating. You could still tow another small trailer behind it if you wanted to. But being within that weight rating and, and, and understanding the, the capabilities of the vehicle and building within those is very important. And this truck is just a, it's just a monster when you take it off-road. It's, it's smooth, it's got more power than you could ever need. The big diesel system with the dual alternator system that it has it was originally an ambulance, so it had a large uh, electrical package on it designed to support the existing electrical stuff that, that an ambulance uses. We ripped all that stuff out, but we still had a lot of the, the remaining engine components like the alternators to, to assist with powering our existing solar system. So we have a 200 amp uh, alternator s system with the two alternators pushing charge into our batteries whenever we drive. We also use the coolant from the truck to heat our hot water system. So having a big, robust, reliable diesel truck like this um, as your core backbone behind the Expedition Camper is always key. So this is uh, running the Ford 6 liter diesel and uh, it's been fully studded and built from the ground up. Um, we got the truck, it was a used vehicle at 80,000 miles. Uh, we stripped it pretty much down to the chassis. We had the motor completely pulled, we, we stripped it all the way down to the block, we had new performance heads put on it. Uh, new turbo, um, EGR deleted, we did all the bulletproofing. So we had a couple different shops do it. The first one was McDiesel's in Reno, Nevada. They did the, the head job and they did um, a bunch of the bulletproofing. And then we took it down to Desert Diesel in Phoenix and they continued to EGR delete it and then tune the truck on a custom tune. Since those two shops have touched the truck, it's been nothing but reliable. We've driven it uh, about 9,000 miles since, since the finished job and we haven't had a single issue. We average about 14 miles per gallon. Uh, when we're towing our Samurai, which we did for about 8,000 miles of our last trip, we averaged about nine. Um, but on its own, it does pretty well, about 13, 14. And you can easily cruise on the highway at 80 miles an hour, uh, you know, very light throttle. It's got plenty of power, more than you'd ever need. So starting off, we have a, it's an ARB winch bumper. Um, it's got the Hella Rally I front uh, pencil beam lights in the middle. It's got a Smitty 17,500 pound winch. It has the Baja Designs S2 Pro lights. Continue moving back. Um, the fender flares have been cut out and modified to fit the 41 inch Continental MPTs. 
The Continental MPTs are fit on a custom 20 inch wheel. Those are made by First Attack Engineering. It's a custom designed tire and wheel set up for this truck to give the correct off offset to be able to fit. It originally was a dually and it's been converted to a super single and that's through the use of these, these wheels. The fender flares were cut out. It's a bushwhacker fender flare that makes the, uh, the big round cutout. When we get into the suspension on the front end, we did a four inch suspension lift. That's what also brought the truck up to allow for those tires. Front leaf springs were replaced with Atlas. They're a custom made leaf spring. Out of, they're made out of Southern California. We called them up and gave them our specs and they custom made us the spring. The shock is a, it's an Icon 2.0. It's one of their standard shocks. We also called them and had them custom valve it for the weight of the truck. Moving back to the rear suspension, it also has Atlas in the rear. It originally had a air system that was supporting the rear. We removed the Kelderman air system. Um, it just had a squishy ride feeling and it, it wouldn't, didn't seem like it would be reliable for long-term overland travel. So we removed all that and converted back to a leaf spring setup. We kind of matched the front end. We did a larger Atlas rear leaf pack with uh, more Icon shocks in the rear. We also have a custom rear sway bar, a Hellwig front and rear uh, with custom tie rod ends. Um, to match the height of the truck so that it can flex at full articulation. We have a front custom roof rack. It's all aluminum. It only weighs about a, about 65 pounds, but could probably easily support two or 300. It's good for firewood and all that kind of stuff. Above that is a rigid horse 40 inch light bar. The whole truck has been lined. Uh, the fender flares, all the outside trim. Uh, it's in a bullet liner. Up on top, the white thing you see is uh, it's it's made by TurboCool. It's a evaporative air conditioner. Um, so it keeps the truck cool. It pumps water up to the truck, up to the top from our water tank. And then it uses a fan to, just like a swamp cooler does. And uh, that'll keep the truck cool on, on, on even 90 degree days. It does a great job and it uses very low power. We, uh, we're actually a reseller of those. Uh, so if you guys need any, you can get in contact with us. And then we also, uh, we have 660 watts of solar on the rooftop between two different panels, two 330 watt panels. We have um, a roof vent above the bathroom so you can vent out the bathroom. And then there's a large Dometic skylight up there. It's also a hatch that you can open up and you can get onto the roof to clean the solar panels as well. So these are, they're just super heavy duty. If you're gonna be off road all day long, if you're gonna be spending hours and hours doing true overland travel, hitting the Mojave Desert Trail, um, you know, going through hundreds of hours of washboard roads. You want a reliable tire that's not gonna pop on you, that's not gonna degrade through, through the tough terrain that you're pushing it through. The Continentals are just a proven, reliable platform to start with. Uh, they have a huge amount of traction and, and tread depth in them. Uh, they're kind of like a mix of a mud terrain with a all terrain. Um, they do really good when it comes to both on-road driving as well as off-road driving. Uh, they're quiet on the highway. You can cruise at 80 miles an hour and they're, you wouldn't know the difference between driving on a, a regular all-terrain tire. They are heavy, but when you have a big uh, 600 horsepower diesel, it's not as big of a deal. The Earth Roamer chooses to run the Continental MPT on all their vehicles. Uh, they've proven that it's been a great reliable tire for, for years now. This is behind our bathroom area. Our bathroom is in our pass-through, so we're uh, kind of a limited compact space here. But we still utilized a small spot to be able to uh, keep our, all of our chemicals for our toilet. We keep an extension cord in here, some cleaning supplies, some cords. It's a shallow area that still good for a couple few things of storage. Try to utilize having the door here and, and, and still put some storage there. And so the original ambulance had all these nice heavy-duty doors. We removed all of the, the, the lights um, and then replaced that with body work and had it repainted. But we didn't want to get rid of any of the doors. Um, so this one, this is the only one that really is kind of jammed up by the rest of the, uh, the interior layout. But there's still some space. This is a battery tray. This is for the, um, the original batteries that come with the truck, the chassis batteries. They're on a pull-out tray. I can slide out. Makes it easy to change batteries. Kind of cool. All these doors are lockable, which is nice. Nobody can get into any of them. Same key, I guess. Same key for all of them. Moving on, 
we get to the, the house batteries instead of the chassis batteries. Inside here we have three Battleborn 100 amp hour lithium batteries. We have room for about another 100 amp hours if you wanted to expand it, but there's really no need to. You got plenty of power in here. They're also wrapped in a, a starboard insulation material to keep them warm. And then we have ventilation coming in um, from the interior of the truck so that at night your batteries don't get too cold either. This is a 30 amp inlet so you can uh, charge your batteries from uh, an RV exterior source if you ever ran low, which you really never ever do. <laughs> this is a big storage locker. This one's great for camping chairs. Uh, we keep our little fire pit in here, uh, table. Uh, it's pretty tall. You could almost keep a pair of skis in there. Um, another great storage locker. All of them are real heavy duty. The doors are all insulated. There's insulation material inside of the panels. Um, you know, it's built like a vault. All right, so out here on the back, we have a uh, pair of Max Track style recovery traction boards for when you get buried down in the sand. We have a four gallon Rotopack uh, extra fuel tank. We carry an extra little bit of four gallons of diesel in there. We open the doors. This is where we keep our spare tire as well as some storage. So the 41 inch spare tire, full rim, full spare tire sits right here in the back. It's pretty easy to grab, slide out, drop onto the bumper and pull down. We also have some extra storage all around it. I like to keep my tool bag in here. Inside of here is the whole solar system. It's all tucked into the corner. Uh, it's all nice and protected, hidden away from everything. So stuff's not falling into it when you put your gear in here. Uh, we also have a tow hitch, a fold away step so you can access your hitch. That's pretty sweet. Yeah, right now we have just a shade to block the windows, but if we get rid of the shade, that's the bed up there. Um, and when you're you could open the back doors, have the bed folded out, and, and be looking out the back too if you wanted to, but we've, we don't really do that. You could. <laughs> so, so back here, we have uh, our largest storage box. Back here in the rear, it also houses our heater. So we have a, it's a S-Bar D2 diesel heater. It actually has its own small diesel tank. It runs off a, it's a two gallon tank. Um, this two gallon diesel tank will actually run the heater for for about a week uh, with just that two gallons and then you can top it off with the roto pack if you need to. Uh, you fill it up when you're at the gas station the fill up is right here as well so it makes it nice and easy. And then you got a big storage for whatever you want to put in here. Uh, you got tons of gear space which is always nice. Coming around to this side we have both of these are dedicated to water. This one houses our gray water tank which is with inside of the body of the camper. So when the heat is on and the camper is fully insulated around the tank, the tank will never freeze. Uh, this is the back of our kitchen unit coming and draining into the tank. We have a little bit of storage around it. We keep a hose in here. Um, kind of boring there. Coming up to the main water tank, we have a 55 gallon water tank here. It's uh, vertically stored so that there's very little slosh when you're driving off-road. Above it on top of that is uh, an 11 gallon isotemp water heater. Uh, it uses coolant from the truck to heat the, the hot water. It also has a 600 watt coil that it can use to to heat the water from the solar system as well. Uh, we also have a an outdoor hand wash station which is pretty cool. So you don't have to go inside when you get your hands all dirty working around in the fire pit. These are the coolant lines that run up to the water heater. They get rather hot when you're driving. And the hot water from the tank will also backflow down the cool lines. So at night it really helps to keep, it helps maintain the tank from freezing. Uh, we've been down to, to 11 degrees is the coldest night we've been so far and we've had not even close to an issue of freezing. Welcome to the interior. Uh, we could start off with the kitchen unit. We have a bamboo countertop, stainless steel sink, and a Furion induction cooktop. All of our cabinetry is lightweight Baltic birch. 
It's a really lightweight but strong ply material. It's great to make cabinetry out of for expedition trucks. All of our latches that we have um, are all made of metal. They're stainless steel and they're a push lock system. It's really secure. We did a downswing opening door. Uh, makes it simple. You don't have to have extra hinges and stuff that break. Lots of nice storage up top. Keep all your kitchen stuff. You can hear those latches when you shut them. They click and they make a real nice sound. You know they're secure. When you come down here, you got the same style latches in the door. You got big under the sink storage. Our sink is pretty deep, but it still allows for a lot of room underneath. You can have your nice trash can under there and all your all your normal kitchen goods. We have three drawers here. These use a push and a twist system. It's a double lock. It's a marine latch. They're uh, dovetailed cabinetry. Uh, really nice high-end woodworking here. Everything is slow close cabinetry, so you're not banging anything around. These ones are pretty, pretty deep as well. They go all the way to the back wall, which is nice. You got tons of storage here. On this side, uh, we have two big locker drawers. We keep our pots and pans in these ones. These ones are huge. You got you know three or four cubic feet of space inside of here. You could fit a ton of stuff: pots and pans, all your groceries. Um, we've we've gone and packed it for for a three month trip, and we we get everything that we need in here that we think we need, and we still have space. Uh, it's been it's been awesome compared to compared to any RV or or other travel vehicle that we've ever been in. We have also touch lighting up above the kitchen. Gets a nice shine down, which is cool. All of our lighting in here is made by a company called Lumacoin. Uh, they're made in Germany. They're a touch system. You can run your finger around it to dim them, to dim the light. So at night you can run them all really dim. Uh, so if you're kind of urban camping in a neighborhood, Nobody knows that you're there. You can you can still have light, but keep it so nobody can see it from the outside through the tent, which is really nice. You can individually control each light, and you can really get it the way you you want and feel comfortable, which is super nice. Lighting is always important. So I'm five foot eight, uh, so you can't be much taller than me, uh, or you're gonna hit your head. Um, so we can we can do a taller build with a taller box. Uh, this this ambulance that we started with, we were limited by the roof space. Um, so if you're a short guy, this, this one's great for somebody that's about five foot, five foot eight or shorter. Um, for me, it's super comfortable. Anywhere to choose too. <laughs> yeah, for Mike, it's a bit of a, a bit of an issue. <laughs> so, um, as we move over to the dinette area, this is a uh, in couch mode as we call it right now. You can take these handles, you can pull it all the way out, and it drops to a nearly king size bed. We could do that here in a second. Um, underneath me is storage. So if I pop out of here, I pull a cushion out. We have the same push lock latches, big storage bays behind all of our seats. This is where we keep all of our clothes, shoes, that kind of stuff. Hidden underneath the other one uh, is another one. You got another big storage latch here. The heater pipe passes through there, but you still got plenty of room to, to fit lots of clothes, another good gear. So these are made out of a uh, vinyl. Uh, it's a marine grade vinyl. Uh, you could pour red wine on it, spray it, and wipe it right off. <laughs> and then the floor is actually also a vinyl material. Uh, this is actually a, a marine product. You see it in boats pretty often. Uh, it, it's super easy to clean. It doesn't stain. It doesn't scratch. Uh, it's, it has a layer of insulation built into it. It's a, another great product for an expedition truck. 32 inch LG TV. We have RGBW strip lighting all the way around. That's fully adjustable. You can change the color. Underneath the bed here, you can pop the table head off. And then you got these big storage drawers. Those are my wife's when we travel. I'm sure she puts the majority of her clothes. <laughs> uh, but they're pretty big. You get a lot of space. It's like having your, your dresser at home. And those lock into place when you shut them. 
so that you can't just pull them out super easily. And then the table also helps to hold them in place. So this is a purchase product. Uh, this is a marine product. Um, found it on Boat Outfitters or one of those. Okay. Exact same thing on the other side. We got another big storage bay. And it's the same thing underneath the bench. If we want to see it all. This one's got nothing obstructing it. Another big storage bay in there. There's the light control. You have a power station. You also have a 12 volt charging station. So you got your USBs here, which are kind of sweet. And then you have the controls for the lights behind us, which is a fully touch control panel, which is kind of sweet. So you can change the colors. So cool. So cool. <laughs> and then down here on the other side of the bench, we have another USB charging station. Um, we have a USB-C, a couple outlets here, and then some cup holders. So right now I'm standing in the shower. You got your shower head, your shower nozzle, ready to take a shower. When you're ready to take a shower, you can shut off the rear of the truck. And I can shut you off. And I am in the shower stall. So these are made by Stowit Industries. Uh, they make these custom vinyl shower door panels. They have a squeegee when you shut them, so it squeegees the water off, which is pretty cool. You can actually custom order these to the, to the height and length that you want. So we custom built this whole shower panel and then we ordered these doors to our specific dimensions. Uh, we have a fully stainless steel shower pan. Uh, this was all hand TIG welded. Um, it's connected, these walls are made of starboard. It's a, it's a marine kind of plasticky material, super waterproof, very durable, super easy to clean. We've got another LumaCoin touch light in here. As we face this way, we have a five gallon Thetford, uh, it's a, called a Curve, it's, their, it's one of their portable toilets. It's a super easy unit to use, it's got an electric flush and a side flush handle. And then above the toilet, we have a vent with a light so you can shut yourself in, do your business, nobody will smell your business, it vents right out above you. Yeah, when you shut this thing up, you turn that on, nobody has any idea what's going on in here. Open the door, we have the full pass through. This takes you to the front of the truck. Um, you know, it's not huge, but it gets the job done. You can crawl through, get in your driver's seat, and you're ready to rock. Um, up front we have a, uh, this is a full Android touchscreen, Android 10.0 uh, head unit. It connects to a rear backup camera. We have all of our light controls. It actually ties in our alternators to our house batteries. And there's a button right here, so if, if our truck's chassis batteries ever get too low, we can actually tie the chassis batteries to the house batteries with a push of a button, and we can jump ourselves off our own truck batteries or off our house batteries without having to get out jumper cables. It's pretty sweet. Uh, and then other than that, it's a pretty basic F450 interior. We removed the big center console in the middle that had the ambulance part so that you could make it an easier pass through. So that's nice, good to go. So this is our little control area. We, uh, we have our controls of our solar system here so you can monitor your, where your power's at and your inverter load. You got your ever important fire extinguisher. And then this is a isotherm refrigerator. It's made by the same company that makes the water heater. Uh, really good product, marine quality product, all stainless steel. It only runs on about, I wanna say maybe 15 watts when it's, uh, when it's under full load and then when it's already cooled down, it, it draws a couple of watts to stay cold. It's a great refrigerator. It's got a little freezer inside of it. It even comes with a tiny little ice tray, which is kind of cute. So the bed, you just grab the handles and slide it right out. It locks into a pin on the right side there. Grab that mattress and pull it down. Almost a king size bed. <laughs> It's free floating over the dinette system. We use 8020 aluminum uh, as our support. And then we have a birch bed frame system. The mattress, the mattress itself actually has a quarter inch uh, ply of wood built into the bottom of the mattress. 
so it also helps support it over the slat system so you can be pretty heavy and still not have an issue here and you got plenty of room um me and my wife have a big two-person sleeping bag it's like a big double bag right. and we just throw it on top of this um we've also done like a sheet setup and just blankets like a normal bed pretty comfortable because this one folds up it was nice to have the sleeping bag that we could stuff away and then right. fold the bed up for the day so and then when you get down you got the bench seat to step on it makes it real simple you're not about to come out of the bed and break your head open it's pretty comfortable setup to close the bed you gotta you gotta reach and grab it which isn't too bad it'll fold up into its shape you can grab the bed and close it right up put it back into couch mode for the daytime this is our heater vent that's where the heat comes in from the the s bar d2 uh, we have the heater control up under here uh, it's a thermostatically digital controller you set that thing at 65 degrees at night and even on a like i said uh, i think it was almost 11 degrees our coldest night we were still roasting in here in our sleeping bag it was too hot <laughs> We have a, a ton of insulation inside of the walls. Uh, we use a product called 3M Thinsulate. Um, and we have about an R15 value inside of the walls and the roof and the floor. Uh, so it's a true four season camper. It does great in hot and cold weather. This is our uh, turbo cool air conditioner that we talked about, or the evaporative cooler. It can also be used as a vent. You can exhaust or blow forward. You can do either way, which is nice. So when you're cooking, you can use it as an exhaust vent to get all your stuff out. This is our big skylight that we have. Uh, it's a Dometic product. It also has a bug net that you can shut to keep the bugs out, which is pretty sweet. And then for nighttime, it has a, a nightshade, which is pretty sweet too. And that's the interior, pretty much. That's most of it. We have our little, our little coat rack over here, and our full-size mirror, your prep station. Yeah, make sure you look good before you hit the trail. And this this specific design doesn't have a closet, so it's nice to utilize the the hook systems. So, so yeah. Well, howdy friends, I hope you enjoyed that rig walk around. Um, I think we can all, all agree that that was not a minimalist overlander. So when it comes to outdoor ethics, there's no bigger impact that we as backcountry travelers have on the landscape than in the vehicles that we travel in. And the first rule of backcountry vehicle travel is stay on the trail. Now, when you have a 12 ton camper or even a fairly small vehicle with a, just a regular trailer, the consequences of going off the trail can it be at least a minimum leaving ruts, damaging the ecosystem, or getting stuck and needing recovery, and that often makes things worse still. So to avoid all that, my tip today is get out of your vehicle and scout the road ahead. Uh, on our first trip last spring, um, I had the trailer on the back of the coma and we were trying to go up this narrow road, which according to Google Earth looked like there might be a campsite. Well, there wasn't a campsite there. and um, much less we couldn't get the truck up there. So I, did, I waited too long to go scout, scouted ahead, came back, well, we're gonna have to turn around. So I had to back the trailer up into some um, bushes and then ended up having to drive through the stream to get out, which isn't great. Um, you know, it certainly wasn't tremendously damaging, but um, it was bad form to say the least. Later on in the season, I was pulling the trailer and did scout ahead on a narrow trail in the Nightingale Range um, I stopped at a place where I knew I could turn around without getting off the trail and walked all the way down through a rocky section um, to another turnaround point. We had to do some crawling to get through, but at least I knew I'd have a place to turn around if things got worse further on. Okay, that's all I've got for you today. If you want to learn more about outdoor ethics and motor vehicle travel, check out treadlightly.org. Let me know in the comments if you had similar experiences or any other outdoor ethics tips. Happy trails. Hey, so this vehicle is for sale. If you want to find information on all of the specs on the vehicle, you can go on expeditionportal.com. 
and we're one of the featured classified ads. Um, if you also are interested in a custom build, you can go ahead and give us a call anytime. Our website is autarkyev.com and all of our contact information is listed there.